Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, and producer who is heard every day on the contemporary and smooth jazz charts around the world. His music career spans over 25 years, and he has produced multi-number one hits on Billboard charts. He has been a touring member of Acoustic Alchemy, and has played numerous club dates and headline festivals worldwide. He has also written and produced tracks with Grammy Award-winning pianist Omar Akram and many other smooth jazz notables to include Vincent Ngala, Brian Simpson, and Paul Taylor. I am so happy to have him on the show today. Let's welcome Mr. Steve Oliver to this show. Aloha, Steve. Welcome to the show. Oh, aloha. Thanks for having me. It's great. Thank you so much for being here. To my audience, I just saw him this past weekend. Steve Oliver, Michael Paolo, and Marion Meadows put on an amazing show here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I had a blast. <laughs> I think the whole audience had a blast. All of them were just high energy. But Steve, you are something else. Oh, well, thank you. It, it was great to see you and and feeling the love from in Hawaii and Honolulu. And oh, my gosh, what a joy fest that was. <laughs> now, how did you get your start in, in the music industry? Um, well, you know, music, I knew what I wanted to do from birth. You know, it was always music. I was always attracted to, you know, listening to music, you know, as a as a baby, you know, and my mom remembers me rocking in the crib and I mean just always love music and my parents weren't really musicians so you know I didn't it wasn't like they brought it to me it was just something I wanted to do and so I started very young wrote my first songs in like fourth grade performed them for my fourth grade class so I always sang and played guitar it was just some I just that's what I wanted to do Wow. And is the guitar the only instrument that you play or do you play other instruments? You know you sing, but do you play any other instruments? Yeah, I play keyboards. I write a lot, you know, in my studio. I'm in my studio here. Um, I have keyboards and I play bass and I play drums and do a lot of programming. So, yeah, I'm very diverse and different things. I've even played violin on a couple of my songs, you know. Oh, wow. So I now, love, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I just love playing different instruments too because it inspires you know to write you know differently. So right, I'm... right. Now, who were your musical influencing influences growing up? Oh man, I mean, I I'm a geek of music. I listen to everything. I mean, all styles. I mean, every genre I was into, you know. And I grew so I grew up listening to. You know, I was into the rock thing and then R and B and and you know just following everyone from Earth, Wind and Fire to, you know Stevie Wonder to you know the rock stuff and then the jazz guys you know Lee Rittenour, Larry Carlton, Pat Metheny, um, and a lot of European bands like D Sound and you know very you know electronic music. I love Vangelis. I love soundtrack composers like i really like songwriters i've always followed you know people that write you know really good music and so now, now you write music oh yeah so what is your process for writing songs when creating a project oh it's you know i could write a song right now if i wanted to <laughs> i mean it's really simple i could make something up make a groove you know, the, bing, 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 and I do it with the voice first and sing and then, then get it going. Oh, and then I'll pick up the guitar and then start. I'll just hear stuff right away. Oh, wow. And it comes really fast. So there was no process. I just, as long as I put the energy to start writing and it just starts flowing. Now, what there are there. Are, and I, I love asking this question because I want to know what, what you artists say. There are there are other extraordinary guitarists out there, right? Oh, yeah. What sets you apart from them? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I do do, I with my guitar, I do a lot of sounds. 
mm-hmm. you know, triggering keyboard sounds from the guitar and nobody's really doing that you know anymore or not i mean i'm always trying to find guitar players that do multiple sounds with the instrument so i really dove into guitar synth technology and you know trying to play a, a orchestra sound or flute or um in any, any instrument you know any any instrument a keyboard you know player can trigger on a synthesizer i could do from the guitar it's kind of what i do and i do it in the shows in fact i did it in hawaii you yeah. know I'm doing the orchestra sounds and then i'm doing you know so every song i'm playing a sound yeah you amazed me with that flute sound that you did <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah it's fun you know and i like to be musical with it it's not like a gimmick right like really you know think of the instrument like a flute and, and play it that way i'm not playing chords with a it's a monophonic instrument playing one note at a time you're not going to play a chord on on a guitar and get a you know it just doesn't work right so i think of the instrument that i'm triggering on the guitar so it's a different thinking process that uh-huh. you know it's funny and i do a lot of you know talking with other players and stuff and they're always like well, what do you you know it's like they've never seen this before and it's like well the technology's out there but just not a lot of people are doing that you know they're not playing synth guitar or you know dived into that world like i have and i've been doing it for a long time and you do a great job at it as well oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> i love it you have been very busy you just came off of a month-long cruise with dave cause right yeah and, and you just came off of that cruise and then turned around and came to hawaii like you just got off one day and they came to hawaii yeah oh the cause crew we were in spain and we told you know Mallorca. we you know i mean malaga you know just um, you know all these ports and and it was three it was a three-week thing and then we had rehearsals you know um a, you know before we got on the cruise so yeah it was a solid month of being on the ship and and just with all the artists you know we're we're like family we're just you know captive on that ship with with uh you know 2000 people each cruise you know and we did three separate sailings and and we did a lot of shows there was like there was like over 200 shows you know put on you know over the time and it was absolutely stunning and amazing now what was the highlight what was the highlight for you on the cruise oh man there's so many highlights i mean you know it's funny cuz you know there you know peter white rick braun I mean, you know, Mindy A. Bear, you know, of course, Dave, and I mean, a lot of new artists, Marcus Anderson, and I mean, just, it, just artists after artists. So we're doing a lot of playing together, mm-hmm. you know, like last minute ask, like Peter White came up to me and goes, Steve, can you sing with me, you know, and there, oh, there's Peter. Yeah, there he is. That's on the cruise. He had his own Peter White's pub. And so Peter invited me to sing with him on his show and, and you know hey do you know these songs i'm like well i've heard them i've never sang them but i'll sing it sure so you know a lot of that kind of spontaneous stuff that you'll never see anywhere else but on the dave cause cruise wow so, I so, I been on that cruise. my goodness yeah it was so much fun and just being around the fans you know one-on-one we did a lot of clinics you know we did guitar clinics and with Adam Hawley and Jonathan Butler and Norman Brown and me and Peter White, Mark Antoine. And then we'd all talk, you know, g- guitar and then how we do what we do. And so it's, you know, it's things on the cruise that, you know, most people don't get to see us do. And right. especially all together, you know. Right. Um, now, what? Now, you've collaborated already with a lot of people. You're big time like that, right? Oh, oh love it. <laughs> yeah. What would be your dream collaboration that you, anybody that you haven't done with yet, who would be your dream collaboration? Peter Gabriel. Oh. I, he's creative. He's always been creative and he's world music. He's jazz. He's electronic. He's, he's pop. He's rock. He's R&B. He's, he just is so diverse and I love, you know, the percussion stuff, you know, that he, you know, with the world music, 
he's one of them. And then, you know, of course, Pat Metheny would be another one. And love to do something with Philip Bailey. Um, I have so many, you know, bucket lists, you know, artists, you know. <laughs> It's like I tell the artist, you know, you speak that into existence, right? Oh, and yeah. It'll happen. It'll yeah. happen. It's something you really want, it, it'll happen. Oh, yeah. I, sure. I believe in that. That's a good point. <laughs> yes. Now, um, the music industry has changed so much, especially um, with smooth jazz. Where do you see smooth jazz going in the future? Well, I think, you know, what it's doing... You know, it's a it's very diverse, you know, the genre. So, you know, you could do R&B and pop and jazz and Brazilian music and Latin music, and it's still diverse. And that's what I love about it. So I, I keep seeing it doing that more and electronic, you know, a lot of electronic sounds and, you know, adding different colors and, and being creative. You know, it's a very creative genre. So I think it's going to go more that way, you know, and more creative and, you know, and 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 diverse yes for sure i know and you mentioned latins because i love latin music as well and um, i i love your chips and salsa <laughs> yeah thank you yeah it's a fun I was so glad you played that yeah <laughs> i was so glad you played that too yeah yeah oh yeah that's a party it's a party yes. song now let's get into your 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 discography you have a total of uh, eight albums out? Yeah, there's, a, you know, almost 10, you know, now. Right. It's a 10 or 11. It might be, you know, yeah, yeah it might be more than that. <laughs> but your your latest album that came out, well, first of all, your, your latest single, which just came out, Skyway is making the charts like crazy. Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's a great song. It's it's I'm very proud of the writing of this song, and I got to work with a, a great uh, producer, along with me. I produced it with Michael Baroni, Michael B, and he's wonderful. He does all a lot of the tripping and rhythm artists, Cindy Bradley, and Nick, he did Nick Colleone's um, last album before he passed. And so you know he's a great guy, and I've known him for twenty years, and. So it was great working with him on this new album that's going to come out in September, which is called A New Light, actually. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And um, so Skyway's on the new album, too. And I just really love this song. And can't wait to play it live. Oh, and I can't wait either. But you have your album that came out in, in 2022, uh, Soldier. Number one, this is a two-part question. Okay. First of all, how did you come up with the name of that album? And what sets this album apart from all of your other albums? Yeah, well, you know, there, Sojourn came about because it's, you know, a journey and, you know, music when I'm writing, it's I'm gone, you know, it's like a journey in itself, just writing music. Mm -hmm. So I always, and I like the name Sojourn. It's just, it's, you know, it's very broad scoped title. And what makes this album different from my other ones is it's a solo guitar album. And it's just me on guitar here. I recorded the whole thing here in my studio. And what I'm doing, I'm triggering synthesizer sounds and the guitar at the same time. So I'm, I played all those songs live. So they went down like a live performance, but I was triggering orchestras and stuff. You'll hear those other colors. You're thinking I overdubbed it, but no, I didn't. I just did it, you know, live. So it's a complete solo guitar album. It's an album you put on and just vibe out, vibe out on. I always, because I write music as a solo guitar piece. Uh -huh. So it was a natural forward thing for me to make an album of solo guitar playing because that's how I write my music on solo guitar first and then make it you know on my other albums then make it band sounding production and you know add musicians you know Vinnie Colaluda or you know different players and get Leland Scalar and I've had a lot of famous people play on my albums and great musicians who are just mm -hmm. insane but this was just the beauty of the guitar and my guitar synthesis playing oh nice nice now 
would you be able to just play a little bit of something um, just to give the audience, just for those of you that missed it this weekend here in the light? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just so happen to have a guitar right here. <laughs> and uh, it, it, see if it's even in tune. But um, this is my Kiesel guitars, and they're just wonderful. And I endorse them. I've been with them for, um, gosh, since 2003. And this is kind of the new, the new model uh, with the hollowed out you know section here and it's just yeah you know, so i'll just i'll just play something you know i'll play Just a little solo guitar piece, you know. Yes. Yeah. That's how I write. I write so I could hear the melody, like Skyway. I wrote it as a, you know, you know where I play the melody in the chords, you know. write it so it sounds like two people playing you know kind of at the same time this is a question that i ask all of the artists because i think that when new artists come into the industry they yeah. should hear what you what you professionals do right? right so the question is what advice would you give to an up-and-coming independent artist concerning the business or music infrastructure so basically, what news, What advice did you give a new artist coming into the industry? Well, you know, I produce a lot of artists. Um, and I have this conversation with every new artist that I work with. And, you know, because, you know, it's all about education. And that's real important to me as a producer when I'm with a new artist. Mm -hmm. And and I always tell them, you know, just, you know, if if you love it and you feel it and you're passionate, it's, you know, there's the answer. It's kind of, you know, real simple to me because that's all I did. I just followed my passion and then things come, you know, things start happening because, because of that. But if you, you know, if you're trying to chase it instead of listening internally, I don't know. So it depends on, you know, the artist, but I always try to just encourage, you know, and give optimistic I mean, sure, that it's a music business and there's always going to be issues, you know, with any job or any business, or, you know, who, whatever you decide to do in life. But but when you're an artist, you just have to live and breathe it. And and by doing that, other things start happening because people see that you're living and breathing it and they want to work with you because they see your love for it. Right. Well, that's excellent advice. That's yes. Excellent yeah. advice. Yeah. yeah, and you know, because that's all I did. So I'm kind of going by, you know, how I do things, you know. I do things, right. Mm -hmm. And and that's great. Um, where is your favorite place to perform? 
Oh my gosh. I mean, I just got back from Spain, so it was pretty magical, you know, there, but it was on the ship and, you know, we were going to ports, but, you know, I actually played the Playboy Jazz Festival and uh, one year and that was pretty amazing. Um, it was at the Rose Bowl. Oh, wow. Yeah, that year they had it there and got to go to Hugh Hefner's mansion, you know, the Playboy Mansion, you know, for press. And so oh. that was pretty amazing. So it's it's interesting how certain, you know, shows that you do bring you to other ventures, you know, like other. Well, I never thought I'd go to the Playboy Mansion, you know, you know, but the, you know, doing that. So that was pretty amazing. And the Catalina Jazz Fest, there's so many festivals and shows, you know, I love, you know. But we need to get you back here to Hawaii. How about that? Oh, invite me. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> what new projects if any you, you, you talked a little bit about something but what new projects if any are you working on and what shows should we should we be watching for um on the calendar like what what shows am i going to come to california for or follow you oh yeah you, all my tour dates you know are on the website steveallermusic.com and I'm doing a lot of touring. I'm actually this whole year I've been on the road, you know, pretty much, you know, you know the whole year it's, you know, I'm all over the place. So yeah, there's lots of dates and um, October, I'm really going to be gone the whole month of October, me and Brian Simpson, because I did an album with Brian Simpson. Yes, you did. It came out in 2020 and he's a dear friend. Unified. Yeah. Unified. And it came out during COVID, you know, so, <laughs> and, uh, it, the COVID album, you know, but it went to number one on sales on um, on Billboard chart, and it did really well on radio. And you know, and I would love working with Brian because I write with Brian for his solo albums and help produce. Mm -hmm. That's so I do you know his solo albums before we did our album together, and so he asked me to do that album. So you know, me and Brian are going to be doing some dates uh, this year. We have done some already. But we're going to be doing more with Joaquin Joyner joining in with us. Nice. So, so yeah, and then maybe you know me and Marion and and Will Donato and you know you know it's just a, a great tag team of artists that we're all you know get to play with on certain dates. You know, I'm Jeff Koshwa. I'm going to Yoshi's in Oakland. Uh, I saw that. If I could fly over there, I would. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because that's kind of my hometown where I grew up. Uh -huh. I'm from the Bay Area originally, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, heading to the back to the Bay Area. My brother still lives up there, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, unfortunately, I told you the time was going to go through, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> it did. Our time has come to an end, but I thank you so much. I enjoyed seeing you this past weekend I know. and i enjoy interviewing you today i am just blessed to do that today oh thank you glenn you're you're awesome and it was so great to see you in hawaii and and your passion and your love it's awesome so thank you i love it love it love it and i definitely love you and your music and i'm definitely going to be following you um you never know you might see me and then she's or following you somewhere you never know i'm perfect I'll put you on the guest list. Okay. <laughs> That's guaranteed. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for being with me today. And to my guests, thank you so much for tuning in, listening to my cold and everything. But thank you for... for tuning in. And until next week or in two weeks, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com.
Mahalo.